Welcome back to We The People University. My name is Abaya Israel, former police officer and former sheriff's deputy. Police. Today we're going to take a look at the Lakeland Police Department located in the state of Florida. Today's video is very disturbing and I've covered several videos that are disturbing. But this video is disturbing because not only are we dealing with a, a, a teenager, a 16, a 16 year old kid, but we are dealing with police officers who we know attack any and everything that moves, but we're dealing with police officers that not only attacked a 16 year old kid, there is no way you can justify this as techniques to get someone to um stop fighting or you know surrender or anything like that um this looks more like a gang fight um police officers holding this kid by his hair and just punching and you know wailing on him this looked like a street fight um but yet it's a kid and Granted, he's a pretty he he's he's not a small kid. He's a pretty he's a pretty big kid as far as he's like maybe six, I would guess maybe five eleven, six foot. So he's not a small kid. Okay. Um, but the point of this is it's still a kid. And nowhere in the video, at least that I have, that the clip that I'm gonna show you that we can see that this kid is fighting back or even attacking the police officer in any type of way, although that's what they alleged. But again, it's disturbing because working as a police officer, I know when there are cert certain uh, uh, situations, we are trained a certain type of way. Side note, all police officers are not trained equally. Uh, many of these guys can't fight whatsoever. And this is kind of what we're looking at within this video. But since it's two against one, and that's another disturbing part of this video, it's two grown adult men fighting or attacking or jumping one 16-year-old child. Um, let's take a look at this. Um, you know, and one more quick side note. It's, it's, it's also as sickening to me, um, YouTube. I fight like hell to get these videos published without them being, um, let's say, uh, demonetized, age restricted, or just completely blocked when I get an email saying it's against policy. It's, it's always going to be something with YouTube. And sometimes the level is higher than the other. And when the age restriction are placed on these videos, then that's a problem. Um, not because uh, the money uh, it doesn't come in for the video and I'm demonetized. That's not the issue. I have several videos like that. I, I don't get paid for those videos, but I still push those videos out. Why is it the problem? And the problem is because no one, not as many people get to see the video when they're age restricted. And if people, if there's not a large gathering of people and a large response, then the video is not as effective in getting the police department to be held accountable. That's the problem. Um, so it just thought I'll let you guys know that if you see this video, then because I've had videos taken down. They just disappear. I receive an email. Hey, your video's gone. That's happened. Um, so, but it's it's sickening that the things that I've seen on YouTube, as far as um, uh, advertisements or the type of videos, adult content videos on YouTube, but we can't show you guys this type of content. But let's jump into this video and leave your thoughts below and tell me what you guys think. The story you'll see only on 10 Tampa Bay, disturbing video of two police officers punching, then using a taser to disable a 16-year-old boy, all of it stemming from an argument during a Memorial Day pool party. This is 10 Tampa Bay at 6. I'm Carolina Lead. Well, another accusation of police brutality against Lakeland Police Department, but this time the person making the allegation is just 16 years old. It's disgusting how he was treated. Jatay Lewis says that's her 16-year-old son, Jamal Hudson, being punched and tased by Lakeland police. Witnesses to the altercation yelling. Now, I want you guys to know that this started because of a comment, according to the article. This started because of a comment that one of the officers uh, made to the 16-year-old. And that was, instead of being at a pool party, you should be next door at the gym. And... I will tell you this, and some of you guys will be able to um, um, verify that what I'm about to say is true. I used to live in Lakeland, all right? 
And I've had encounters with Lakeland police officers, um, not as a normal citizen at the time, but I've had encounters with them and they say anything. They act any type of way. There is no limit. So when I heard that, and I'm sure you guys who live in Lakeland area or are familiar with it, when you heard the statement of them saying to this kid, he should be at the, the, the gym instead of the pool insinuating that he's fat or overweight or whatever they're saying. It's not hard to believe. I wholeheartedly believe they said that. And I do believe that would make anyone upset. And now because the kid responded with what he said, and now all of a sudden here comes a gang fight by police officers. Let's keep watching to the officers, letting them know Hudson is a minor. They were told to leave and they were leaving. When that comment was said, that's when all hell broke loose. The video does not show what led up to the altercation, but Hudson says he was attending a pool party that was broken up when a neighbor called police. He says he went back to the pool to retrieve his shirt, and that's when what first started as a verbal confrontation with officers escalated. In the video, Hudson is punched multiple times, with one officer gripping him by the hair, then tased before falling to the ground. And none of those kids touched those police officers before then. It was just a verbal argument between a grown man and a 16-year-old boy. The police affidavit states as they tried to control Hudson, he flailed at them, landing a punch to the arresting officer's face. I was told as a young police officer, um, this was maybe six months, maybe, after my academy. If you're going to put your hands on someone, you have to take them to jail. And when I questioned him about, what do you mean? That it was stated that if you touch someone, make sure you go to jail. Put a charge on them. That way you do not get in trouble. I was mind blown. Um, needless to say, my tenure within the period of time that I worked in the department has zero complaints. Zero complaints from the public. There's a reason for that. Because those type of statements, those type of th that that type of training did not set in my brain, right? So, but that I, I tell you guys that because this is the mentality of police officers. So when you see things like this, and then as we continue to watch this clip, this young kid is being charged with battery on a police officer that never happened. I don't believe it ever happened, but that's where that charge comes from. And as you guys probably already know, anyway. It's just a covering of their steps. They're just covering their tracks. Nothing more. Let's keep watching. This latest allegation of police brutality comes just three days after local community activists demanded police chief Sam Taylor reopen their investigation into officers involved in the videotape confrontation with Antoine Glover. The Polk State Attorney's Office recently announced charges against Glover had been dropped. Although we have several cases that we've been dealing with in Lakeland, I think this is the most disturbing. Jamal Hudson was in juvenile court today facing charges of trespassing, battery on a police officer, and resisting arrest. Lakeland Police Chief Taylor says he is aware of the incident, has met with community leaders now about it, and has already requested an administrative review by the Office of Professional Standards. In Bartow, Eric Glasser, 10 Tampa Bay. Now, we also requested a copy of police body cam images in the video. Officers are wearing the cameras, but it's not clear if they were activated during that confrontation. Hudson was appointed a public attorney and uh, told to stay home until his next court hearing on June 7th. Here's something that's a misconception, also, uh, uh, oftentimes misunderstood by the public, that police, you know, they just get in their vehicles, they go out to attack and harm and not or disrespect the public, but that's not always the end of the story um these things that we we're watching right now these type of clips the videos that we watch daily this actually happens within the walls of the police department um this, these are some things that i cover within my book um for example and it was a, a lieutenant and a canine officer in the patrol room literally going back and forth at one another trying to rip each other's heads off they're trying to kill each other but you know, it was stopped, and then we did the patrol room uh, break, the huddle, and then after that, they go out and they patrol the streets. And from that point, what they do when they see you in the street, literally trying to rip each other's heads off, they're going to arrest you as if they never left the patrol room doing the exact same thing. The point is, the same thing happens within. Um, a lot of bullying by police officers. 
uh, out on the streets while patrolling. That happens within the police walls as well. All right. So when you guys say, well, they were bullying high, bullied in high school, they're still being bullied within the police department walls, which is why they carry that frustra frustration with them out a lot of times. And the public are the victims of it. These things, it, there's so much chaos a lot of times within the walls. There's so um, such a, a poor level of training within the academies and not many officers will stop and question any of it or re-educate themselves or anything. And if need be, literally step away if they have to. Not many officers will do that. Um, there are a few, uh, but not many. And those who do, they try and go a different path. But those who don't, we watch videos like this. Again, I say this every time and I'm going to continue to say it. This is why you first must know your rights. Secondly, you must always record the police because even if you know your rights and your rights are violated, if it's your word against their word, we know how that's going to end. Always record the police. With that being said, we the People University signing off.